वेलकम एवरी वन टू अवर स्ट्रक्चरल जियोलॉजी एंड जियोटेक्टॉनिक्स क्लास टूडे इन दिस क्लास वी विल लर्न अबाउट द फॉल्ट्स सो फॉल्ट्स आर इनफैक्ट फ्रैक्चर्स द पार्ट ऑफ फ्रैक्चर्स देर आर नंबर ऑफ फ्रैक्चर्स लाइक फॉल्ट्स ज्वाइंट्स स्टाइलोलाइट्स एक्सेट्रा सो फर्स्ट वी विल ट्राई टू नो दैट वट फ्रैक्चर्स आर सो फ्रैक्चर्स आर इनफैक्ट द प्लेनर डिसकॉन्टिन्यूटीज और इंटरप्शंस of the rocks physical quantity due to its stresses the geological fractures occurs at every scale starting from the microscopic scale to megascopic scale that is from the lattice to the plate boundary scales so that any large volume of rock has some or many of these fractures these discontinuities are related to sudden elastic relaxation of elastic energy that is stored in rock because of continuous stresses that are operating in the earth's lithosphere the geological fractures have their economic importance as well the loss of discontinuity in the intact rock provides the necessary permeability for the migration and accumulation of fluids such as ground water and petroleum the fractured reservoirs and aquifers are typically anisotropic since their transmissivity is controlled by the conductive properties of the fracture with the local stress field partially controls geological fractures may be partially or wholly healed by the introduction of sedimentary minerals often giving rise to ore deposits by recrystallization of the original minerals so faults are also important fractures in which there is mineralization they can be traps for the petroleum as well so what are the faults in fact how they are different from other particular fractures for example joints mostly they are extensional fractures and faults are shear fractures the shear force must be there in order to produce the fault because you need to break that particular rock mass and not only break that rock mass you will have to move that rock mass uh, masses either above or below or past each other so in order to move that on a plane that is known as fault plane you need to have shear stress so we can better say the faults are in fact the shear fractures although the faults occur in all type of regimes like extensional contractional and a strike slip regime but in order to move the blocks you must need the shear stress components that's why it is appropriate to say the faults are shear fractures so planar discontinuity is along which the rock lose cohesion during their brittle behavior are known as joints as we can see here in this diagram i will show you by the pointer so if there is no component of displacement parallel to the plane and if there may be there may be very small orthogonal parting so these joints are now the extensional fractures they are known as faults if the rocks on the both side have moved relative to each other and the movement is parallel to the plane so these are known as shear fractures apart from that we have bends if the fractures are filled with secondary crystallization those fractures will be known as veins joints and faults they divide rocks into the block whose size and shape must be taken into consideration for engineering querying mining and geomorphological purposes so this is again extensional fracture that is known as fissure so now we will learn the terminologies related with the faults so first of all we will try to define the faults so faults are defined when two adjacent blocks of the rock have moved past each other 
and response to induced stresses the notion of localized movements leads to two genetically different classes of faults reflecting the two basic responses of rock stress that is brittle and ductile so fault in general sense is in fact the brittle fault until and unless the ductile fault or shear zone is mentioned we consider them as faults so what is a brittle fault a brittle fault is a discrete fracture between two blocks so initially these two blocks were in the contact but after faulting they have been separated from the each other so we can say the fault is a discrete fracture between the blocks of rock that have been displaced relative to each other in a direction parallel to the fracture plane apart from this fault plane or fracture plane we have a fault zone that is a region containing several parallel or anastomoising faults so rather than one single plane if there is creation of some zone that contains number of parallel anastomoising faults so that is known as fault zone any fault bounded silver in the fault zone is known as horse the fault and fault zones are identified either when the earthquake occurs or by geological mapping showing that motion across a discontinuity has occurred in the past on geologic maps the only faults that affect the outcrop pattern are usually shown so here we can see this fault cartoon diagram of the fault this represents that this particular block has moved in this particular direction so this is the net slip direction this direction is in fact the strike direction of the fault plane so this particular amount will be strike slip amount and this is the dip direction or dip of the fault plane so this will be dip slip here we have normal fault in normal fault the block which lies above the fault plane goes down so this is known as hanging wall block so hanging wall block goes down in case of normal faults and this represents the reverse fault so in case of the reverse fault the hanging wall goes up the block which lies above the fault plane so this is the fault plane along with the faulting is taking place so this block is going up so this is the reverse fault so these are example of some brittle faults we have one more type of fault that is ductile fault it is known as shear zone so shear zones are analogous to ductile material of fault in a brittle material shear zones are region of localized but some continuous ductile displacement so we can see the cartoon diagram as well as the field photograph of shear zone they are formed under conditions of elevated temperature and confining pressure in contrast to the fault zones that are regions of localized brittle deformation shear zones are thus known as ductile fault by contrast to the brittle fault so we can see that at elevated temperature and pressure conditions rather than discontinuity or breaking of the material these particular material just shifts so that we can see these lines are being more moreover parallel to the shifting direction these are the same lines so these type of zones are known as shear zones we can see the shear zone in a field in this particular photograph now we will study the geometrical classification of the faults so the faults which are dipping at more than 45 degree are called high angle faults the faults which live dips less than 45 degree they are called as low angle faults in general the fault surfaces are curved undulations of the fault surface is commonly seen in three dimensional seismic data rather than in cross section or profile the fault corrugations thereby are identified by attributed to the linkage of fault segment through time there is one more type of fault which is known as lystric fault that is curved concave upward fault 
that gradually fat flattens at the depth so this is the example of the elastic fault you can see and this is a high angle fault and here again this particular plane or this particular trace is representing one more fault plane so that is a low angle fault so wherever we have low angle faults they affect the set of nearly horizontal bedded rocks they generally follow a staircase type of geometry and those are known as ramps and flats the flats are where the two overlying rocks slide along a relatively weak bedding plane and it is also called a decolma plane this refers to the surface across which there is a continuous displacement a strain or fold style so here we can see the decolma the ramps are flat sections climbing through the stratigraphic sequence typically at around 30 degree to horizontal across stiff competent layers the ramps do not necessarily strike perpendicular to the movement direction so if it is it do it is known as frontal ramp but there are also the oblique ramps and they those who are parallel to the movement direction they are known as lateral ramps or tear faults so we have frontal ramp so if this is the transport direction this becomes the frontal ramp the ones which are oblique to the transport direction this becomes the oblique ramp and the ones which are parallel to the transport direction they are known as lateral ramps or tear ramps so here we can see the staircase type of geometry so these are in fact the thrust sheets and there is a plane which joins all the faults at a point along which there is continuous stress so this is known as decolma plane so most long faults they are generally segmented each segment having its individual history the fault segments are generally not coplanar the faults that intersect the ground surface while it was active is known as emergent fault for example we can see this one in this particular fault is intersecting the ground surface and there are faults in which the fault surface do not reaches to the ground those type of faults are known as blind faults so emergent faults they produce the fault scarp so that this region which is exposed this exposed fault plane is in fact the fault scarp and that is generally present in case of neotectonically active faults in older faults these things have been eroded so in older faults it is tough to get the fault scarps so wherever we get the fault scarps that indicates that area is neotectonically active so now we know that the fault separates the rock mass into two different blocks so the rock mass has been now separated into two blocks to so the block which immediately lies above or below the non vertical faults have been named as hanging and foot walls so the one which lies above this particular fault plane so this is the trace of the fault plane this is the trace of the fault plane overall there will be a fault plane along which these particular blocks are moving so the block which lies above the fault plane is known as hanging wall and the block which lies below the fault plane is known as foot wall so we can remember it by remembering that in general there is crystallization of secondary minerals along the weak planes like faults joints etc so there is generally mineralization along this fault plane or fault zone so there is a ore vein along the fault zone if miner stands on this particular zone the miner is going to keep his feet on the foot wall and the one which hangs above those particular blocks are 
in fact the hanging wall blocks hanging wall so this is the hanging wall and this is the food wall now on the basis of movement of these two blocks whether the hanging wall is going up or food wall is going up in relation to the hanging wall we have reverse faults and normal faults so now we can see the rock mass immediately above or below the non vertical faults or shear zones are referred as hanging wall and foot wall respectively the rocks that have been translated to the great distances from the original site they are known as allochthonous they come to the rest on autochthonous rocks which have retained their original location and paraochthonous refers to the locally transported rocks so let's say that this particular block has came from the greater distance so this will be in fact the allochthonous block and this block has been there for the longer duration it has not got displaced anywhere so this is our in fact autochthonous block and if there is local transportation the particular moving block has not been detached from its root zone that is our paraochthonous rock mass so now we can see that this is the fault zone along which there is mineralization so the one which lies above the fault zone or fault plane is hanging wall the one which lies below the fault plane is foot wall and these terms are applicable in case of the faults which are non vertical non horizontal or in fact the non vertical because in vertical cases we cannot define the which one is below or which one is above so in this particular case we have different scenarios like the one in which the hanging wall is going down so this block lies above the fault plane this is the fault plane this will be fault scar the exposed region so this is going below the hanging wall is going down so this is normal fault and the foot wall is going above with respect to the hanging wall so this type of fault is normal fault this develops in tensional regime or extensional regime so this is the maximum stress direction sigma and uh, the maximum stress direction is in fact vertical sigma 1 is vertical in this case the second type of fault in which the hanging wall goes up in relation to the foot wall that is known as reverse fault so here the hanging wall is going up and foot wall is going down with respect to the hanging wall and there is third type of fault which is over here is a vertical and this movement is taking place in such a manner so that the blocks are moving in the strike direction of the fault plane so this is a strike slip fault this may be left lateral movement and this may be of right lateral type of movement now we will do the kinematic type of classification of different elements in the fault so the first term is slip so slip is taken as direction of movement along the hanging wall relative to the foot wall the displacement vector for example if you see that this particular block was sometimes connected over here so here is a block now the movement has taken place so this block has moved in this particular direction so this is the net slip direction the displacement vector connecting the originally coincident points that is known as piercing points in geology on opposite side of the fault plane is called net slip its lengths provide the amount of displacement on the fault which generally is the addition of several movements the component of net slip parallel to the strike and dip of the fault plane are called as strike slip and dip slip components so this particular move component is parallel to the strike direction so this is a strike slip component and this particular distance is in the dip direction so this is the dip slip component there is one more term that is rake so rake is the angle measured within the fault plane down from the strike direction so if this is the net slip direction this particular angle on to the fault plane itself will be the rake angle now there is a term which is known as plunge 
so plunge angle is measured in the vertical plane that contains the slip line between the horizontal and this plane and the net slip line this offset shown by the planar feature in a vertical cross section perpendicular to the fault is called dip separation the vertical component of the dip separation is through and horizontal component of the dip separation is known as heave notice that the dip separation is not equivalent to the dip slip the former depending upon the orientation of offset surface as well as nature of fault displacement so this is the component in dip slip direction so if the fault plane is dipping then the vertical component and horizontal component are respectively known as throw and heave of the fault so faults are also classified according to the direction of relative movements between the fault blocks which is related to the type of stress causing the fault so the first one is the normal fault so normal fault is a high angle dip slip fault in which the hanging wall has moved down relative to the fault wall so this is the fault plane if we see the block which lies above the fault plane is hanging wall and the one which lies below the fault plane is foot wall so in this particular case the hanging wall goes down and the movement is in fact confined in the dip slip direction a normal fault brings the younger rocks over the older ones so let's say that this has been characterized by the three beds 1 2 and 3 out of which this is the marker bed so now we can see the this particular bed 1 is always older this is 2 and this is 3 this is the younger bed so now we can see that it has carried the bed number 1 onto the bed number 3 so because of the separation of geological horizons that result from normal faulting such faults are also called as extensional fault because the normal faults develop into the extensional regimes so here we have one more example of normal faults so i have marked the bed which can acts as marker horizon so that we can notice that this particular block is going down this lies above the fault plane so this is now the hanging wall block and this lies below the fault plane so this is now the foot wall block and we can see the hanging wall block is going down with respect to the foot wall these points were initially in contact so these are the piercing points we can see and this will be the amount of net slip so extensional ramp cut down section in a direction of transport and they are termed as detachment although a typical detachment has no root and follows a stratigraphic horizon a normal fault with a dip less than 45 degree is sometimes called as lag or denudational fault so the high angle normal faults are termed as normal fault itself but if the faults are of low angle the normal faults are of low angle they are known as lags or detachments and denudational faults there is another fault in which the hanging wall goes up with in relation to the foot wall that is known as reverse fault so reverse fault again is a dip slip fault on which the hanging wall has moved up and over the foot wall this is the foot wall this is the hanging wall consequently the old rocks are brought over the younger rocks so here we can see if this is bed number 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so these older rocks are being carried to the or over the younger rocks because such faults exhibit the repetition or overlap of geological horizon and they are also accordingly terms as compressional faults because they develop in compressional regimes so they leads to shortening into the lithosphere and extension in extensional regime these fault leads to the extension in the crust so here we can see 
uh, fault in which different sections so we can see this fault in even in 3d are exposed so not only we can see the profile in one direction rather we can visualize in this direction as well so this is the fault plane along which the movement is taking place and this bit can exit acts as marker horizon and we can see that this bit has moved up or we can see this particular block which lies up up that is hanging wall has moved up in relation to the foot wall of this side so there is one more term that is known as thrust in the reverse fault itself so thrust is actually a low angle reverse fault along which the hanging wall forms the thrust sheets or that is also known as naps of the allochthonous rocks that are emplaced over the autochthonous or paraochthonous foot wall the most common thrust faults ramp up section towards the surface in the direction of tectonic transport so there are third type of faults on the basis of moment so these are strike slip faults so normal and reverse faults were in fact the dip slip movement faults in normal faults there is down the dip movement and in reverse fault there is up the dip movement the third type of, of fault is a strike slip fault so if the movement occurs parallel to the strike of the fault plane those faults can be categorized as a strike slip faults the strike slip faults usually have a steep or vertical dips and the relative movement between the adjacent blocks is horizontal that is parallel to the strike of fault plane but that it is not always so there may be some dipping planes as well depending upon the variation in local stress regime the large strike slip faults are also known as transparent faults and wrench faults the sense of strike displacement on the fault is described by the terms like sinistral and textural a fault is sinistral if to an observer the standing on one block and facing other the opposite block appears have been to displace to his left so if you stand over here and you observe so this particular block has been displaced to your left and even if you stand over here and you observe this one so this block again has displaced to your left so if the fault is left lateral that is sinistral strike slip fault and in contrary to that if the movement has taken place towards the right with respect to the observer is standing on any of the block so that is known as textural strike slip fault or right lateral strike slip fault so our next type of fault is transfer fault transfer fault is in fact a strike slip fault that transfers displacement between two similarly oriented fault segments this is the first and this is segment that is two normal faults transfer faults are usually confined to the hanging walls of the detached system that is they are not affecting the basement and terminate where they connect the linked faults transfer faults and zones are lateral ramps that may accommodate differential displacement and or strain in adjacent blocks because there is a different amount of shortening or extension on the both side of the fault assuming that thrust and normal fault strikes at high angle to the slip direction transfer faults linking two thrust or normal faults are therefore nearly parallel to the movement direction so in this case this is the movement direction and this these transfer faults are strike slip faults which are parallel to this movement direction accordingly the transfer faults usually have a strike slip components that vary along the strike slip if displacement changes across the transfer zones transfer faults usually terminate where they connect and terminate at other faults or structures so here transfer fault is being terminated because it is connecting two faults in this particular case we have two normal faults which are being connected by a lateral ramp and along this lateral ramp the movement is in a strike slip direction of this ramp so this is 
a transfer fault so in the diagram we can clearly see that how the situation of conjugate faults arise and we know we have already studied in stresses that these two planes have almost similar or they have similar stress conditions so they are equally likely to get fracture in case of reverse fault and similarly in case of normal faults so block can activate in one direction or in both directions and in case of strikes with faults as well and we know that sigma 1 is always the acute bisectrix between the sigma 1 and the fault plane the angle is always acute so in case of our normal faults the sigma 1 direction will be this one in case of reverse fault the sigma 1 will be horizontal and in case of strikes with fault the sigma 1 will be horizontal but sigma 2 will be vertical in case of normal faults we have sigma 1 that is vertical and in case of our reverse fault the sigma 3 is vertical in nature and sigma 1 is horizontal and these are the stereo plots of reverse fault normal fault and strike slip faults so these observations are the basis of dynamic interpretation of fault system in addition anderson emphasized that the earth surface is a free surface with a fluid the air the fluid are unable to support any shear stress that is they cannot sustain any type of stress on it so this is the physical definition of fluid therefore the earth surface is principal plane of stress remember that the principal stress is per definition is the orthogonal to a no shear plane assuming a bulk horizontal attitude of the surface of the earth which is nearly true in low relief region one of the three principal stresses is close to the vertical the type of conjugate fault that develops near the surface depends on which of the three principal stresses is sub vertical so sigma 1 is vertical the normal fault mainly dips at around 60 degree because it's acute bisectrix sigma 2 is vertical then the vertical strike slip faults are uh, going to be result and in case of sigma 3 vertical the thrust fault results so they dip around 30 degree because in this particular case the sigma 1 is going to be the acute bisectrix between the sigma 1 and fault plane so the angle will be less than 45 degree so generally the thrust fault dips 30 degree because of this situation and vertical fault dips a normal fault dips at around 60 degree because of this situation this interpretation involves that the vertical stress is the lithostatic pressure and the regional stress variations are due to changes in the magnitude of horizontal stresses relative to the vertical gravitational load there are three possible ways both principal stresses decrease by different amounts in magnitudes both horizontal principal stresses increased by different amounts in magnitudes and third situation is one horizontal principal stress increases while other horizontal principal stress decreases this formulation explains many fault systems but low angle normal faults and high angle thrust are identified natural cases that do not abide by the anderson's rules explanations can be role of anisotropies or pre existing fractures in the natural rock which affect the fault variation and possible strain along sigma 2 direction other explanation involves rotation of fault planes towards non conventional attitudes so synthetic or antithetic faults they again so the association in the faults synthetic faults are the parallel and they have same relative moment as the master fault so this one over here is the normal master fault this is normal faults and this one is the master fault and there is again one more fault the direction of movement of which is parallel to the master fault so this fault will be now synthetic or auxiliary normal faults contrary to this there will be another faults the dip direction of which will be opposite and the moment will be opposite to that of the master faults those faults will be known as antithetic faults and in this case this is antithetic normal fault 
uh, contrary to this there are faults which are reverse faults so here we have the master reverse faults and now this fault is parallel to the master thrust so this is synthetic thrust and now we can see one more thrust but the moment is just opposite to the master thrust so this will be antithetic thrust or antithetic back thrust so this one is fourth thrust so with respect to this fourth thrust this will be the back thrust so here we will learn about different type of normal faults so the normal faults we can see over here it's a strict normal fault this is graven and this is host so a down drop block bounded by conjugate normal faults dipping towards each other is graven and relatively elevated block that is bounded outward by dipping normal faults this is host and here the normal faults are dipping away from each other and rifts are the major grabbins that extend along the long distances so if we have extensional system so we have development of the rift valleys and here this graben structure in fact the constituents of the rift valley a graben is bounded by single set of normal faults on one side of the tilted fault block that has triangular profile and that particular graben will be known as half graben so an ideal graben and host system the growth rates of the faults are equal so that the fault blocks do not rotate and the grabens remain symmetric throughout the extension event in natural fault system however the faults grow at different rates and therefore give rise to asymmetric grabens and block rotation as well in fact the faulting is usually associated with rotation so here we can see that this particular block is representing the half graben and here we have symmetric graben and this is the host there are two types of normal fault along with the rotation is important one is planar faults and another is elastic faults so planar rotational faults occur above the basal detachment or brittle ductile transition they are separated or juxtaposed and tilted blocks without internal deformation both the faults and fault blocks rotate simultaneously about an axis through roughly parallel to a strike of the fault that is rigid body rotation resulting in domino or book self faulting so this one this fault here we can see the basal detachment these are associated with the basal detachment and here we have the fault plane so these blocks are rotating and together with these blocks these fault planes are also rotating so this results in a book shelf type of a structure this is known as book shelf fault or domino fault each fault has its own half graben so here this structure which develops is in fact the half graben each fault must have same amount of displacement and tilting or there are a space problems at the bottom of the system that is here we have opening of the voids planar rotational faults and blocks generally rotate about one axis and the planar rotational faults and blocks generally have viewed against the transfer or seizure faults that is they terminate against any transfer or seizure fault so here we can see that this is a planar fault this is planar non rotational fault and this is planar rotational fault so here we can see this block these two points must have been in contact before the faulting and movement so here we can calculate the extension as well so here this is l1 and this length is l2 so initial length of the system was l1 plus l2 and there is change in the length that is delta del delta l so how we are going to calculate the extension extension will be in fact the change in length upon the initial length that will give us the extension in this non rotational planar fault and in case of rotational planar fault here we have the fault dip angle is theta and the angle 
of this strata the dip of strata is alpha so if we add d cos theta plus l cos alpha this will give us the amount of extension an extension coefficient we can calculate the l by d where d is this displacement and l is in fact we have the length of the block so we have l by d cos theta plus cos alpha minus 1 that is the amount of extension and total extension in distance is d cos theta plus l cos alpha because of this planar rotational fault or domino system so here we have series of planar rotational fault in the field so these are in fact series of planar rotational normal faults the scale is about 2 meter from top to bottom or so this particular length is in fact roughly 2 meter the faulting has accommodated approximately 60% of the extension now initially before the faulting the area was less having less width now because of the faulting the system has been extended to 60% of its original length so these are the faults along which the rotation of the block is occurring and we can see the peculiar book shelf life of arrangement of these faulted blocks so they are also known as domino faults here as well so here we have book shelf or domino faults in the field another type of rotational fault is lestric normal faults but it's not the planar fault so normal faults in particular the master faults in general they are lestric or we can say they concave upward they may look steep on the surface outcrops here we can see they they are looking steep although they are basically horizontal at depth so as we go on in the deeper conditions the dip of the fault decreases from steep to gentle so this gives rise to space problem if the adjacent block is rigid so if the adjacent block is rigid this will rotate and go like this and there will be creation of space and here this will be the amount of extension that is due when the opposing blocks are displaced they cannot remain uniformly in contact and the gap must develop between the hanging wall and the foot wall so this is the hanging wall now and this is the foot wall and there is creation of gap if this is not rigid the system will collapse like this and we will have formation of an anti fault the voids which are created because of lestric normal faulting they may be filled by rocks that are broken from the fault walls or they voids may provide site at which the minerals are subsequently deposited from the circulating fluids so these are the spaces where either the rocks are deposited or it is filled by the circulated fluid so the secondary minerals are developed in these places in order to maintain the geometric compatibility the beds in the hanging wall rock have to rotate and dip towards the fault so here we have rotation of the block and so this is dipping towards the fault collapse and rotation of hanging wall towards the fault produces the block rotation this fills this gap and flexure is eventually accommodated by number of antithetic and synthetic faults so these faults are synthetic faults synthetic normal faults and if the fault develops in this direction so these are antithetic faults that sole into the low angle master fault so they are terminating against this master fault note that the triangular shape of the half graven over the roll over defines the dip of associated lestric faults so lestric fault geometry is important because it can accommodate much larger amount of extension 
than planar faults for the same amount of slip. The steep part of detachment is sometimes called the break away fault. So here we have listing normal fault. This is the space created by listing normal fault. So this block bends and creates a rollover anti form. And this particular space, which is created, is in fact the half graben. And here we may have number of synthetic faults. So these faults are dipping in the same direction as master fault, or we may have antithetic fault. These are dipping in opposite direction to the master fault, etc. So these are the models of collapse deformation, filling the gap between the hanging wall and foot wall of a major listric normal fault. This is a field photograph of listric normal fault. Here we can see different blocks of foot wall and hanging wall. So the dip of the fault plane is decreasing with respect to the depth and it is being horizontal. This is another listric fault which is being horizontal near the field of this geologist is standing here. So this is curved normal fault that is known as listric normal fault. Now we will study the thrust. So thrust are in fact low angle normal faults. Two styles are commonly invoked to describe the thrust tectonics. One is thin skin tectonics and another is thick skin tectonics. They refers to the degree of involvement of the basement in consideration of the thrust system. So first we will take the thin skin tectonics. In many foreland fold thrust and thrust belts, the sedimentary cover is detached from the basement typically along fault planes with ramp flat geometry. So this is flat, this is ramp. The sole thrust remain above the strong crystalline basement left undeformed. This style of deformation is known as thin skin tectonics and the bedding plays a controlling factor in generating a steer case ram flat system. So here this is the fault bend pool. Here in deformation the basement is not involved rather the sedimentary cover is moving. So we have creation of this ramp against which this hanging wall moves and as it moves, it moves onto the ramp, then it get bends. So we have creation of anticline, this anticline and this anticline or syncline as well. So this is our flat and this is a ramp. We can differentiate did these particular structures on the basis of foot wall and hanging wall. So the planes which are parallel to the foot wall are foot wall flats which are parallel to the hanging wall are hanging wall flats and which are non-parallel to these structures. So they will be a ramp for that. For example if you see this one this is parallel to the foot wall and parallel to the hanging wall both. So this is hanging wall flat and foot wall flat and if you see this one so this is non-parallel to the foot wall. So this will be hanging wall or foot wall ramp. And this is parallel to our hanging wall. So this will be hanging wall flat. And if we see this particular region. So this is parallel to both foot wall and hanging wall. So up to here, this will be foot wall flat as well as hanging wall flat. And if you, you see over here, this is again parallel. So here, this will be flat. But if, if we see over here, it is non-parallel to the hanging wall. So this will be ramp for the hanging wall but flat for the foot wall. This is how we define the ramps and flats in case of these thrust systems. So this is thin skin tectonics because it involved, involves the deformation of the basement rather the sedimentary cover deforms. Thin skin tectonic implies large horizontal displacement whereby the stratigraphic sequence above the floor decolma can be piled up several times, one above another. Thrust seat upon thrust seats. The thrust seats are generally thin compared to the lateral extent. Thrust 
fault may develop in sequence either forward which is termed prograding or backward that is termed back thrust where the later thrust develops in the foot wall of the virginal thrust the earlier higher thrust seeds are carried forward by the later that are the lower ones which earned the name of piggy back thrusting conversely if the thrust development migrate backwards and overstep sequence develops the thrust sequence often results in stacking of series of thrust sheets separated by sub parallel thrust faults making up imbricate zone or supa structure so this is structure as a whole it's supa structure when an imbricate zone is bounded at the top and bottom by master thrust or decolma surface region master thrust or decolma surface the whole package now is called duplex so this structure is duplex structure individual imbricate sheets within the duplex are called horses so these are the horses they are bound by the fault silvers on both the sides and on top and bottom as well these are the decolma plane they are typically lens shaped in the cross section the typical duplex structure therefore consists of flat lying roof thrust and floor thrust that is also called sole thrust so this thrust is sole thrust or floor thrust this is the roof thrust the enclosing stacked up pile of horses so back thrust are subsidiary thrust with a displacement opposite to that of the main thrust so this is the main thrust the back thrust the uplifting hanging wall block between thrust and the back thrust forms pop up structure so this one here we have emergent thrust in this direction thrusting in this direction so this area relatively uplift so this is known as pop up structure if the back thrust truncates an earlier thrust then a triangular zone is also developed so here we have the main thrust and here we have the back thrust and back thrust is truncating against the earlier main thrust so we have formation of this triangular zone and here we have pop up structure now another type of tectonics involved in the thrusting is thick skin tectonics so in thick skin tectonics the deformation of basement also occurs in metamorphic regions thrusting is commonly associated with intense and distributed ductile deformation the steer case flat and rent geometry is not respected in these cases major shoal thrust extended steeply down the basement although the thrust zone tend to follow the surface of rheological contrast they involve the basement this is style is termed as thick skin tectonics so here we have deformation in the basement rock as well together with deformation in the sedimentary cover so this is the sedimentary cover in case of thin skin tectonics only this sedimentary cover deforms and the basement remains intact but in this case we have deformation in the basement rock together with the sedimentary cover so this type of tectonics where both the basement and sedimentary cover are involved in the deformation is known as thick skin tectonics when thrust sheets which have moved from the larger distances they get eroded there are areas which are exposed into which we can see the basement rock or at the other times the rocks thrust sheet rock they are eroded from all side and only a patch of thrust sheet rock is left over the basement rock so that we can also see so a window or fenestre is an erosion exposure of the rocks below the thrust fault and that is surrounded by the rocks above the thrust or this particular structure where the isolated thrust sheets are present this is known as clippe so we can say that clippe is an isolated erosional remnant of thrust sheet that is surrounded by rocks of the foot wall 
so in case this one is a thrust seeds which have moved onto this particular basement rock so this is our hanging wall block in the fault and the on which it lies that is wood wall block so here within the hanging wall block because of erosion of hanging wall block we have exposure of wood wall block so this is window and if onto the foot wall block we have isolated patches of hanging wall so that is our clipping so we can also come to know the minimum displacement because once the seat was moving this isolated structure remained here and here is the remnant of that so this is the minimum displacement we can interpret out of it gravity driven thrusts slip sheets are formed when a coherent part of a series has slipped away as gravity collapses form an anticline crest and rest on the eroded surface within one of the adjacent synclines so they include the strike slip faults the strike slip faults are in general vertical and developed at 30 degree to the horizontal compression direction major strike slip faults can be traced over several hundreds of kilometer in which they cannot be the simple planar movements they often develop a system of right stepping or left stepping faults where the right stepping faults generate an extensional zone left stepping faults generate a compressive zone so here is a extensional zone and here we can see the compressional zone according to the sense of displacement on the master fault so another category is subsidiary faults of curvy planar master faults so this one is a curvy planar master fault and these are the subsidiary faults to the curvy planar master fault usually subsidiary fault belong to the same class as the host master fault but this relationship is not always respected where the master fault is curvy planar hence imposing a complex strain of the hanging wall through the development of accommodation faults so there is a rotation of hanging wall of the elastic normal faults that may change a former antithetic normal fault to apparent reverse one a reverse fault may form in the hanging wall of the convex upward normal fault so here we have normal fault and that is convex upward normal fault so once this block is going down we have breaking of this block there is development of another fault planes and now we can see that these faults which are being formed at the hanging wall block of curvy planar convex upward normal fault so these are the reverse fault in the hanging wall block itself so these are in fact reverse subsidiary faults in the hanging wall of a convex upward normal fault so we may get the normal faults in compressional regime as well or we may get the reverse fault in some extensional regime as well if the conditions are like this reverse faults may also form in tilted layer to accommodate layer parallel stretching due to large scale normal faulting so here we can say that this is the large scale normal faulting here so there is a stretching in the layer so in order to accommodate that stretching we can see that there is formation of some reverse fault at local scale so this is in fact a thrust fault this is convex upward thrust fault where this particular block is hanging wall block and this block above is the hanging wall block, lies is foot wall block so we can see that this block is going up but we have formation of normal faults in the hanging wall block of 
the thrust which is convex upward thrust so normal faults may form in the hanging wall of convex upward thrust because this is going down so because of the creation of a space there will be collapse of this hanging wall block and these blocks now the newly created block within the hanging wall block they will fail by normal faulting so now we will study the fault population in network because faults seldom occurs in just a single fault plane rather we have network of faults wherever there is faulting if we analyze a regional area rather than a local area so the analysis of fault population has shown that fault exhibiting many characteristic of fractals as a fractal is an entity that has geometric properties that is shape either independent of size or exhibiting simple relationship with size this characteristic means that a pattern of fault viewed from satellite pictures looks the same as pattern of fault seen in the outcrop it implies that some fault properties like length to throw ratios are relatively independent of fault size however analysis of fault on 3d data sets has shown that in log log space there is a simple linear relationship between fault frequency and fault size this relationship between the fault size that is length or maximum throw and the number of faults with a certain size that is few large faults and many small faults that can be used to predict the density of a small sub seismic faults there are few important terms that exhibit the fault arrays in the map view so we will look for them now we have an echelon pattern so an echelon means a step like arrangement and it describes the consistently overstepping and overlapping alignment of sub parallel closely spaced structures that are oblique to the planar zone in which they occur such pattern are commonly related to the potential faulting so here we have this overstepping or overlapping parallel to sub parallel fault so this is an echelon pattern we have merging faults as well in brittle regions and damaged zones the fault frequently explained to complex arrangement of smaller faults so here we have major fault and we may have some splay faults as well so these smaller faults that curve away from the direction of master fault the line of connection where a fault splits into two fault surfaces of the same type is the branch line so this is the in fact the branch line from where the fault is splitting into two faults beyond this line the branching splay form an imbricate fan that spreads the displacement over the volume of the rock a splay is small of an inactive fault segment or branch created during fault coalescence or propagation in the population of fault we have another pattern that is anastomizing pattern so radial shear of any scale they may merge with one another to form an anastomizing network of fractures in a narrow fault zone whose bulk borders are parallel to a main fault anastomizing refers to a branching and rejoining network of irregular surfaces or lines interlaced like a braided stream or veins so this one we can see there are number of radial shears which are joining and rejoining to form an anastomizing pattern of faults and overall the fault is in fact a master fault in which we have number of population of network of radial shears which are making the anastomizing pattern so now we will study the fault anatomy the faults do not have infinite extent they consist of slip surfaces a slip surfaces are in fact a fault course for thick faults a mode of anastomizing shear fractures and an enveloping 
dimmagione that spreads over some width. These two elements either simply die out along their strike or terminate against other faults. In the later case, faults either merge with or truncated by the other fault as a result of fault growth and coalescence the fault develops a fault network so in anatomy of fault we have important terms like tip line and tip zones so single isolated faults are approximately elliptical surfaces along with the most of the slip has taken place this elliptical shape is broken if the fault intersect the earth surface the aspect ratios between the length and the width of elliptical master fault planes tends to be greater than 1 to less than 5. So this is the 3D conceptual model of a damage zone around the fault. So this is the fault plane or slip surface. This damage zone at the fault tip. We can see this is the tip point, this is the tip line and here we have ductile deformation over and here the fault is brittle fault. This is end or beginning of the fault surface. From here the fault surface begins and here it ends. And we can see this surface is almost an elliptical surface. Tip line and tip zones. The relative displacement must fade out outward. It drops to zero at tip line which encloses the movement plane. In other words, the tip line separates slipped from non-slipped rocks. So here up to this tip line we can see that we have slipped rock here and below that we have non-slipped rocks. Beyond the limiting line, the fault displacement is accommodated and dies out across a tip zone. In various ways, depending on the ratio of fault length to the fault displacement. So another term associated with the fault anatomy is fault damage zone. So damage zones are in fact array of entangled minor faults and fractures along the larger faults. The density of faults and fracture usually decay exponentially away from the master fault. So this one is the master fault apart from that we have normal minor fractures or different other faults in the damage zone. So if you see the damage zone or master fault, then this particular fault's intensity is decreasing that once we are going away from the master fault zone. The damage zone occurs because of stress concentrations, particularly at fault tips and in linkage zones. They also occur to accommodate displacement variations into or along faults. Initiation, propagation and, and interaction classify damage zones into tip, wall and linkage damage zone based on the position within and around the fault zone. A tip damage zone develops in response to stress concentration at fault termination. A wall damage zone can be distributed along the whole trace of fault. They may represent tip damage zones abandoned in the wall rocks as a fault propagated through the rock. They may also represent wall rock deformation associated with the buildup of slip faults. The linkage damage zones are caused by the interaction of linkage of fault segments in relatively a small region. They are complicated due to cumulative displacement and interaction of tip and wall damage zones of two neighboring faults. So this is one fault, this is another fault, this is wall damage zone, and this is tip damage zone, this is tip damage zone. This form because the linkage of two different faults. So consequently the linkage damage zones can develop a wide range of fracture patterns depending on the interaction between two fault segments 
So now we will study the fault termination. Mesoscopic tip damage zones in front of tip lines are characterized into four subdivisions accordingly the nature and orientation of fault and fracture develops that are wing cracks hostile splays synthetic and antithetic splay faults tip damage zones are easy to recognize even at large scales so now we will study the wing cracks wing cracks occur where there is a rapid decrease in the slip at fault tip at fault plane irregularities such as bends, steps or relay zones and at the point of variable frictional properties along the fault surface. They abute fault planes and are extension fractures that tend to curve toward parallelism with the local maximum principal stress direction in dilational quadrant of fault front. We have anti-cracks. They are also known as stylolites. They form in the compression of basin. Anti-cracks are solution surfaces that are stylolites symmetrical to the wing cracks with respect to the main shear surface. They are orthogonal to the sigma 1 direction in compressional quadrant of the fault front. So wing crack develops in dilational quadrant and this wing, uh, this stylolite develops in fact in the compressional quadrant so they form due to compression they are also known as anti cracks or in fact if you have two fractured block you join them by compressing from above and below or if you have a block because of compression there is development of irregular zigzag fracture that is known as stylolite the another type of fracture we have is pinnate fracture or feather fracture feather fractures are extension fracture that form in echelon arrays along the slip surface so we have number of feather fractures so it forms the in echelon arrays so now it is uh, pinnate fracture or feather fracture the tension gases are pinnate fractures that are filled with the crystallization i have as we have seen in the earlier slide so another term we have is splay shear fractures they are categorized into two correct categories that is synthetic splay faults and antithetic splay faults synthetic faults are geometrically and mechanically similar to the wing cracks but they are finer and more closely spaced uh, with relative low angles to the master fault they have same sense of slip as the main fault and may link with a neighboring fault segment horse trail fractures splay asymmetrically out often one side of the main fault in the fan shaped network they tend to develop where the slip dies out more gradually towards the fault tip than for the wing cracks so another fault we have is antithetic splay faults they have sense of slip opposite to that of main fault and tend to develop at high angles to the master fault they are isolated fractures they are separated from the master fault and they often increases their length and spacing away from the fault tip so this is the fault tip if we see that they are increasing their length away from the fault tip and here in synthetic we have the sense of movement of the fault or this is also known as branching of the fault this is connected to the master fault and their dip and slip is in the similar direction as master fault but in case of antithetic the dip away from the master fault so another term we have with the fault anatomy is relay zone or linkage damage zones a relay uh, is in fact a structure that transfers the displacement of one fault segment to another fault segment the overstep is the discontinuous interval between two sub parallel faults or we can strictly say that they are similar structures in fact if the normal to the tip of one overstepping fault intersect the other fault uh, there is overlap of these two faults so we can see over here the alternative is under lapping the distance between the overlapping parallel fault segment is separation 
the separation or overlap ratios provide the crude measurement of fault interaction so this is the separation between these two faults and we can see that this segment is transferring the moment from one fault segment to another fault segment so this is in fact the relay zone and in which we have separation we have overlap where these two faults are being overlapped and this is the total length of the fault so here we can see these two faults are there and there is a relay ram between these two fault segments the degree of interaction is better determined when the separation and overlap values are normalized to the fault length of one and any of the two interacting faults overlaps are described as right or left stepping depending on the sense of jump that goes from one structure to another structure a relay ramp is in fact an area of a vent bending that transfers displacement between two overstepping faults with the same tip direction apart from that we have relay zones the relay zones may lead to large structures whether their scale they are transient features evolving during fault propagation until they are replaced by breaching faults that connects the interacting fault segments to make a single through going fault surface single and double tip linkages are obvious pattern that will form fault bends and jogs where both the tip and its strike of the its strikes lift fault changes now we will study some terminology is restraining that is contractional and releasing or extensional step overs and bending along the dextral strike slip fault so the change in attitude of the fault plane produces compressional or extensional you can see over here stepping zones according to the shape of a step with respect to the moment on the master fault for example if a dextral fault steps to the right the overlap zone or the transfer zone where the fault segments runs parallel faces the direction of shear it is extensional the transverse normal faulting forms void filled with the veins materials or low topography areas with basin sediments that are from shape basins commonly accommodate extension in these zones conversely solution structures anticlines or some high topography mark compressional overlap which faces opposite to the direction of shear so here we have normal oblique fault we have pull apart basin and we have compressional when here again we have formation of a basin that is characterized by the compressional structure and it is characterized by the extensional or transtensional structure this is trans compressional structure to be very precise so now we have different category of fault which are formed by the overlapping of uh, the structure of uh, the transform boundaries so here we have in fact uh, the compressive boundary as well as transform boundary together or we have the tensional boundary or we can say extensional boundary and transform boundary together so we can see that there are different display faults that roots into a, a strike slip fault over here and here uh, so we can see here we have uh, the transpression conditions where we have compression as well as uh, translational boundaries together and here we can see that these structures are uh, somewhat a kind of 3d fault structure they are known as the flower structure and uh, here we have transtensional boundary here we have the uh, normal faults and here in this diagram we have the reverse faults so these structures are in fact negative flower structures these are the main references utilized to form on this classification of fault lecture uh, you can feel free to ask any questions your comments 
um, that are so much valuable to me and they are um, welcomed you can feel free to ask your question in the comment section thank you very much jai hind jai bharat